Hi, and in today's video, I'm going to be addressing a few of the things viewers have been asking me. Well, here's a shout out to Raynette, who's asked me about cleaning books. I think it's worth saying that the care, repair and maintenance tips I give are only simple ones, the sort of jobs most people can do at home using ordinary household things. I would always stress that book restoration and book binding are highly skilled trades and need specialist equipment. So if you have rare expensive books that need repairing, then always consult a professional. However, there are lots of things you can do without too much difficulty. If you haven't seen my two previous book repair videos, then take a look at those too. So, cleaning books. Well, let's look at a simple cleanup of a modern hardback or paperback. Yes, they do get dirty, believe me, and I spend a lot of my time cleaning books before I put them on the shelves in my shop. It's quite easy though, as long as the cover is a laminated one. So have a close look and make sure that it's got a, a shiny surface. If so, just get a square of kitchen towel, dampen it, and rub any marks off. I just use a kitchen surface cleaner. Other brands are available. The most stubborn thing and annoying thing I find is sticker residue. But just persevere and it'll go. Sometimes you have to leave it to soak for a while and then have another go. And then alternate between using a wet um, towel and a dry one and just bit by bit it will come off. If you've got one of those older paper jackets that are not laminated then don't use this method. In fact it's going to be much harder to clean. You could try an eraser, I better not say rubber in case any of my American viewers are watching, or scrape it very lightly with a knife. Beyond that I really wouldn't attempt anything yourself. Trying to clean the actual book can also get you into trouble. It's important to know that hardback books are called cloth bound because yes, they're traditionally covered in cloth. If you look through a magnifying glass, you'll actually see the weave. Again, you can buy a special cleaner like this, but there's a lot you can do yourself with just a damp cloth. But be warned, if you rub or scrub it, you'll also be scrubbing out the dye. So unless you clean it all over, you'll end up with a patchy finish. Really, I would advise against attempting to scrub cloth bound hardbacks, unless there's no other option. For instance, it might be better to make a new paper jacket for it, or even buy a modern facsimile one. You can also put a transparent cellophane cover on it, if you have bare, naked books and want to keep them clean. Now, David has asked me about a book of his that has a partially ripped spine, probably like this, and a loose binding, probably like this. Well, that's a tricky one too. You can accomplish a lot by simply gluing the spine tips together using ordinary wood glue or using a special tape to cover up the rips. That wood glue is also called PVA or Unibond, just ordinary household Unibond like that. Wood glue, might have some in your shed. That also works great for gluing back those loose illustration pages called plates. It dries clear and it stays flexible. Books develop that slackness more often than not because of splits to the inner hinges. Here and here. All in all, like the issue with cleaning cloth bound books, both these repairs are tricky ones. You can run a bit of glue down here, use a, a fine brush, just run a bit of glue down here. But be careful not to use too much or you'll end up gluing the pages together. You can also make a new paper hinge and glue that in. But I would say that if you've got a very rare book with a ripped spine or a loose binding, then get it professionally repaired. If it's not a rare or expensive book, then throw it away. But first, 
order a replacement copy. You'd be surprised how many millions of books there are for sale online that only cost a few pounds plus the postage that are just looking for good homes. So have a look around or give me a call and I'll find one for you. Again, my aim is to focus on what is practical and appropriate for the book in question. Right, and here's the final repair tip for now. A common issue is page edge marks. So don't let people with grubby hands mess with your nice clean books. But it's fairly easily dealt with. Remember that paper is made from wood and therefore has many of the same properties. So get a bit of sandpaper and just sand those marks out. Try it with the pages held fed, you know, clamped together like this, sand them out, and then also try it fanned apart like that. You will get those marks out. Now Rob has asked me how to tell if a Victorian book is a first edition. Well, the answer is nobody knows. No, of course they do. It's just that it's not that easy. The short answer is that there are no real rules as such. It's a matter of referring to previously researched information and comparing the copy in your hand to the copy in a catalogue. It is, of course, down to experience. For instance, I've been offered more valuable first edition copies of Mrs. Beaton's Household Management than you can shake a stick at. But my own research has told me that all the first and early editions were published by Samuel Beaton, that's her husband, of course, who later sold the publishing rights to Ward, Lock & Co. And yes, every copy I've ever seen is published by Ward, Lock & Co. Far, far less valuable than the original Beaton publications. So it's just down to research. But don't forget, there's no such thing as a book expert. It's such a vast subject. So book dealers can only really be expert in one or two different genres. Well, do keep those questions coming. It's great to connect with people, especially when it's clear we all share the same passion for books. As it stands, we are well and truly locked down here in the UK due to COVID restrictions. It's February 2021 and my shop is closed to the public. Things do feel bleak. But books have proved to be a great comfort to many people. And I've been more than busy posting books out to customers all over the world. They say you're never alone with a book. I think that adage rings true now more than ever. So enjoy your books, look after them and stay safe and well.